So we are back. We have Ted McFred fighting against Dregs and... Oh, pretty interesting start. Dregs going for a Jumbot Factory. Ted McFred going for Tank Factory. We're on Scary Land, which I think is actually better for tanks than Fairyland. Yeah, it's a flatter terrain overall. Let's double check the pathing. Oh, yeah, no, that's very flat. Yeah, it's green all over for tanks. The only red is up this ramp. It's the only part where they get slowed down. Everything else is complete. It's flat enough they can go at full speed. Let's double check that. Yeah. So for reference, for those of you not familiar with the pathing height map thing, purple is unpathable. Red is slow pathing. Green is fully pathable. Although interestingly, there is actually a bit of a ramp issue. Yeah. This the ramp to the north from the south side of the south from the north side can't really work with tanks very well that I would say if there's a if there is going to be an adjustment to this for any reason I would smooth this ramp out a little bit just to make sure that tanks can take it because right now it's this weird situation where they can use half the ramp that's not very clear anyhow map design critique aside dregs dregs and type of red kind of even Ted being a little bit faster on their economic economic expansion, having been using their commander to actually build up their economy, but Ted using it instead to really accelerate production. Uh, it's debatable which one's better. I mean, I would say getting economy is the clear winner, but when you're playing tanks, being able to accelerate production once you have more than 10 metal per second isn't nothing. I mean, that one early ogre could be a lot, and now also this Kodachi coming in here Getting rid of two metal extractors. Not quite able to get rid of the constable, though. But still, it's not nothing. Unfortunately, Ted McFred not actually building stuff. Like, that's the thing. If they were building things here, I would say, yeah, keep the commander at home. But they're not. It would be more, it would, it would be more efficient if their commander had gone out expanding. Or, you know, just have construction on loop. Which they will now. So yeah, building ogres on loop, 20 metal per second. That makes sense. And actually, I actually kind of like this. Though. Ted McFred going for a lot of wind generators. I wouldn't recommend on this map, but I do like the fact that they are building it well past the point where their economy, like, where it's double, because the wind gens right now are running really strong. So having 44 energy or something like that, but when the wind starts dying down, that energy is, okay, it's going to be about 15, but it's still going to be fairly high relative to if they try to just get to the very edge of their energy or energy requirements for metal and then moved on. It's something you kind of have to do with wind generators because of the fact that they are not reliable. They, they change their overall energy and sometimes they go quite low and the wind is oscillating a bit. It will be slowing down probably in a minute or two. It is, as far as I know, periodic. Anyhow, though, back to the game, specifically Dregs with the Moderator making these Ogres not able to do anything, completely shutting them down. I'm a little bit surprised we aren't seeing... Uh, actually, what would we see? Kodachi, I suppose. Would be a couple of Kodachi just to deal with that. I mean, the only other option would be something like the Emissary, which... That's kind of over... Gosh, uh, maybe it's not totally overkill. Maybe it'd be worth it. Feels like it'd be overkill, though. Certainly not Ogre. Ogre is not the way to go here. Oh. Yeah, oh, not only that, Pyro coming in along the south side, ripping apart everything that Ted McFred has built up. And Dregs, unfortunately, just kind of stuck. I think Ted McFred, like, this is probably going to be it. This Pyro looks to be set to... No, that's probably going to die to the Lotus. The Welder coming in there just at the perfect time to stop anything massively destructive from happening to Ted McFred. But yeah, these Ogres aren't doing anything against the Moderators. Uh, they're, they're completely a waste of metal. I'm honestly surprised Ted McFred continues to spit out Ogres. Like, Emissary wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, heck, even... I think even Ravagers or Minotaurs would work better. Blitzes would be probably the best bet. 
Though I would say Kodachi would be more efficient for cost. Ogres, regardless, are the wrong choice. And dregs, I think they're 2,000 Medal of Attrition ahead just because of that. Yeah, I'm really not sure what you do to counter moderators with tanks. I mean, Emissary kind of makes sense because moderators are so slow, the artillery element of it isn't going to matter too much. But, yeah, there isn't really a skirmisher in the factory, and Kodachis are quite expensive. You'd have to outnumber the Emissaries in order to be able to even get close, because Kodachis also, I believe, would get one shot. Oh, no, not quite. They get two shots. Regardless, even to get two shot, that that's that's it. Like that's that's it. That's all there is. So Dregs is basically just waiting for the right moment to push in and kill. Kinda of what it comes down to. And I think this is it. The Moderator is coming in here, tearing apart the ogres with basically no issue whatsoever. Kodachis are finally coming out here to deal with the moderators, but again, you kinda have to outnumber them. They're gonna try though. Placeholder not able to take out the Kodachi. Kodachi. Kodachi able to come around the side, start actually burning things. And the moderator goes off. There's the two shot. Yeah, like I said, it's it's a numbers game. And Dregs is winning both on attrition and economy. There, Ted McFred does not have the numbers. That's all there is to it. Like I said, I really don't know what you'd use other than maybe Emissary. And even then, I don't think Emissary is that accurate. I mean, maybe. Does it have a... No, it doesn't say how much variation it has. I don't think it's very much. I think emissaries are generally dead on accurate. Oh, forever. Ogre is a riot now. Like, it's... It kind of was a skirmisher with the rings before, but honestly, riot skirm was broken as a category because that means raiders can't do anything against it. And other skirmishers are fighting on even footing. But yeah, there isn't a dedicated skirmisher. And more importantly, against moderators, you need, like... The common way to kill them is a lot of light units. Either one heavy unit to take their fire and then come in with light units afterwards, or a lot of light units to outnumber them and overwhelm them. But killing them in large groups is not easy. Just because of their range and their slow effect. As soon as they hit your units, the units are dead. Not much can be done, and this is it. Ted McFred goes down. There's really nothing they can do to stop this, unfortunately. Revenant just to hammer the point home. Two Revenants, the third one on the way. And Ted McFred not even building anything right now. I don't know what they're thinking or doing. What are they doing? I can get their... Well, they're just they're just hanging out at home, not even not even thinking about it. Getting more ogres, but honestly, it's too little, too late. There is no reason to build ogres. Well, that's it. That's that. We are in. Just waiting for Temmie Fred to throw in the towel because they're about to lose their factory, and they're about to lose all their buildings. Okay, at this point, I think they might just end up losing because of. Literally the game kicking them out. Like, there is a lose condition in these games besides surrendering. And I think we're going to experience it. <clears throat> Which I believe is to destroy all your opponent's buildings. Though, typically once it gets... Once there's enough of a discrepancy in metal assets... Yeah, overwhelming relative advantage. Then, I think... I think a win button pops up, actually. <laughs> It doesn't matter though. This is this is what we're gonna see. Every single thing we just oh no sorry, no only the advantage gives you vision of everything on the map so that you can go and hunt it down. That's what it is. And that is game. Ted McFred not even like just getting killed, not even choosing to die. Anyway, that was that. So we we just saw a butchering. But Ted McFred may have a chance to redeem themselves later on. They are going to be in the lower brackets, so. Yeah, that is that is that. Anyhow, let's go watch Randy and Google Frog, which promises to be a much more even game. And is also going to be apparently on Scary Land. Alright, we're gonna see a proper Scary Land game now. Actually, I guess I could put down which stage we're at here.
All right. I am giving you guys a real peek behind the curtain this time around. I'm honestly kind of tired. Yeah, tired. It's been New Year's. Happy New Year, everyone. Hopefully 2021 is not 2020. I mean, in more than just the literal sense. But yeah, it's, you know, you stay up late and it throws your sleep schedule off and now it's like, I don't even care. Let's just show everyone all the process. Why not? Professionalism, what's that? Nah, you get to see everything. All right. All right, so this should be a much more engaging game. Google Frog and Randy are both top-level players. I'm not entirely sure who's going to win. I, I slightly favor Randy here. Slightly. Just because I've seen their results, it's a little more consistent. Google Frog, I don't think they're going to be doing anything experimental, but sometimes they do. And it's always a little bit of a crapshoot whether or not they're going to go for like a stable and strong strategy or something experimental that might blow their opponent away or might end up not doing much. But it looks like shield bots... A couple workers or a couple constructors to start out with reasonably stable strategy. That's that's a typical thing to do. Like shield bots are a solid factory. Opening with heavy expansion is a solid opener. Google Frog's commander. Yeah, now this is let's put this looks pretty normal. Google Frog playing a little bit of a, a more of a defensive opening. Not really economic, just trying to get an idea of what's around. Which on Scary Land makes sense. This map isn't very feast. It's very famine. You have, you know, 12 metal worth of extractors over in each corner, 12 in your main base area, or thir 14 in your main base area. Sorry, not 14. Yeah, I'm missing 16. 16 in your main base area, and an additional 14 for every corner. So, map split evenly, everyone gets 30 metal per second. Well, 36 when you, or 34 when you count the commander. But yeah, it's, it's, oh wait, sorry, I was right, right the first time, 36 when you count the commander. And that is... No, I was right the second time. 34. I... Ah, whatever. Anyway, the point is you get about 30 metal per second if you split the map in half. Not particularly high. So, making sure to know what's going on, like having the radar, double-checking. Interesting use of double radar. I'm curious if Google Frog is planning on turning one of those into a Sparrow. Because I don't think the radar shadow from this one would have been covered by this too much. There's a tiny bit of shadow that would have happened around here. But otherwise, Google Frog would have seen anything coming with the one radar, so I expect one of them will become a swallow or a sparrow at some point. At any rate, Randy, on the other hand, much less focused on information. Or, to be more precise, much more confident that their commander's positioning is going to provide them the information they need, plus the radar up front. And that... So far, looks like it's actually working out pretty well. Google Frog, they opened out quite... I mean, it did open kind of passively. And now Randy coming in here with the rovers. Now, of course, Google Frog having opened a bit more passively, but with shield bots, they do have a reasonably good factory for doing kind of defensive strategy into a hard push. And going for... Is that a bot-only terraform? Hard to tell, you can't really get previews on Terraform. But, and I was right! Oh, but, okay, I was half right. They are using a Sparrow. Neither of the two radars they have initially built are being turned into Sparrows. But man, am I glad to see this. I I mean, I think the Sparrow is an awesome unit. I'm really glad it was added. And also, I just, I don't think people scout enough. <laughs> I really don't. Like, people kind of guess the first 5-10 minutes until they get an air factory and then build an owl. So it's nice to see a sparrow. I mean, okay, the sparrow is now dead, but still, it was nice to see it. Ah, I see. This is full wall. Or is it a full wall? Let's double check. No, bots can cross. But vehicles... Vehicles cannot cross. Okay. So yeah, Google Frog playing this very defensively. And doing their best to set up a fortress effectively over by their main base and then build out from there. 
Now, it's risky because they are behind by a medal per second. They have to win on attrition if they want to be able to turn this around, or turn this into a game they can win. And Randy, on the other hand, they just have the north side. They don't care. Now, of course, Google Frog gets rid of the Scorchers and sets up a good pushing force. That might be irrelevant. But that's a big if. Google Frog has lost a lot of their economy. And yeah, they slowed down the push. But still, Randy's got so much more. Just got so much stuff. So much more economy, so much more production. Actually, what is the production right now? Okay, 20 mil per second. Not that much more production. But Google Frog is behind even in that. And Google Frog throws in the towel. Figures not going to get it. Wow, that was... That was short. I mean, I can kind of see why, but at the same time... I would have liked to see that work out. I think with the terraforming and everything, you know, get this kind of setup to push. But I guess because the Scorchers just tore everything apart, Google Frog didn't have much to play with. So yeah, we're going to have Dregs and Randy going up against each other. That'll be our winner's final. <laughs> Astro in the chat. Lobster steamroll it was. Yep. That's right, Lobster Steamroll is, is an accurate way of referring to the situation we have before us. So, that is that. We're moving on to the winner's finals. This is tournament going a lot faster than I thought it would. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's I say that, but I'm gauging time based on previous tournaments, which are usually best of, like, previous double limbs, which are best of three. This is best of one. So, that is is kind of why. Anyhow, with that said, we have... Why is Dregs... Whatever. We have Dregs versus Randy. Or it should be. There we go. Dragon vs. Randy will be our winner's finals. Waiting for that to get sorted out in terms of hosting, and then we will be good to go. And on the other hand, we will have... Oh, Tammy Fred and Blow as well. Why aren't you updating? Yeah, Tammy Fred going at Bloa, Google Frog going at Dan Warrior, Regs, Dregs, and Randy going at it. And that is the match we are going to be watching is Dregs and Randy. Not sure. Are we. Something else in that? Anyway, I'm going to go through to a break. We'll wait until Dregs and Randy are... are up, and then we will continue with the Lost Roll Series Week 1. So stay tuned. <laughs> 